Hey guys, the name is Chris Barocci. Welcome to this short series where I show you my favorite guitars. This time, I want to tell you the incredible story of my custom built Junior. <laughs> Please hit subscribe and ring the notification bell if you enjoy what I'm doing here. And also, don't forget about the description box under the video. You'll find additional infos like uh, signal chain and timestamps and gear links and all sorts of fun stuff in there. This guitar started its life as a 2015 Les Paul CM model. CM, if I'm not mistaken, stands for Chick Magnet which has to be the lamest guitar name ever. <laughs> Maybe I'm mistaken, I'm not sure. Uh, you can let me know in the comment section if CM stands for anything else than Chick Magna. In 2018, Toman got a lot of these uh, CM models, these 15 CM models, and uh, I didn't plan on buying one. It was pretty much an accident. <laughs> This exact guitar arrived in the shop for a customer. The customer didn't want to take it, and um, I just put my hands on it, tried it, played a few chords, and I was like, oh, wait a second. I'll take this one. And I knew this is gonna be my base for my junior project. The body, it's way thinner than a normal Les Paul. Probably you can tell. But it still has a mahogany back and a two-piece maple top, which is an arch top. And that's not something you see very often on such thin bodies. And the neck is maple with rosewood. This is a regular, like Gibson regular 12 inch radius fretboard. I took the guitar apart, removed the sort of semi see-through black-ish, like matte black finish on the top of the body and uh, refinished the guitar. The amber colored middle of the body is actually wood stain. It's not nitro, it's not colored sort of uh, transparent uh, nitro. I wanted to try this and um, I had the stain around so um, I went for it and then for the burst I used uh, dark like black um, nitro cellos. And then at the end I obviously sealed everything with a clear coat nitro. The guitar came with a single 61 Zebra humbucker which was pretty good but you cannot have a humbucker in a junior. It's no, no, it has to be P90. And this is a Lolar Doggy P90 that I bought for this guitar and I absolutely love it. I obviously had to reroute the cavity to make the P90 pickup fit. I also swapped the bridge. The original one was all right, but when I tried this ABM uh, solid aluminum uh, compensated bridge, I was blown away. First of all, the sustain was, I mean, such a difference. And uh, just overall, the clarity, the openness, the um, the richness of the guitar sound, you cannot compare them. Incredible. 
the parts and the capacitor. I swapped them to high quality CTS um, parts and everything. I think these were the Emerson's and uh, it's just, it's such a difference. <laughs> You will notice that I have a pickguard on this guitar, on this arch top body guitar, which is not a very frequent thing to see, for a good reason. <laughs> Pickguards will not bend, so you don't want them on arch tops. This was a fun hunt <laughs> to find a single ply, thinner black pickguard, because that was my only option to, uh, to bend it on the body. This way I was able to make it follow the curves of the guitar's body with only four screws, which was a huge success and I was really stoked to see that it worked. Oh, and if you take a close look at it, you can see some really nasty sort of weather checking going on on spots. I put a um, thin layer of weather checking uh, nitro clear coat on it and uh, that started to peel off after a time due to playing, obviously, especially in those spots where my pick um, hits the pick guard all the time. And this is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want to relic this guitar in a way like my Strat is or my uh, self-built um, T-type guitar right there in the corner. I wanted this to look sort of rock and roll and uh, have some sort of a vintage vibe to it, but I didn't want to scratch off all the paint or anything like this. I wanted to let playing, like proper playwear, uh, do that part and just uh, make it look a little sort of older with little tricks like this on the pick card. Well, it's a 2015 model, so uh, it obviously came with the GeForce tuners. I swapped them. I don't think I have to explain why. <laughs> I also refretted the guitar, not because the original fret work was not done properly, it was all cool, no dead spots, nothing, but the original fret wire was really uh, like low profiled. It's not even that it was narrow or anything like vintage frets would be, but like it was pretty much like a fretless guitar. And I was like, nah, I, I was struggling on it. So I decided on refretting the guitar just two days before we recorded and played this uh, Live at the Lake Toman livestream gig, which was a huge project, so many people involved, and it was a risk that I took to refret one of the guitars I wanted to uh, bring on stage with me uh, just two days before. Because if anything goes south and you don't have time to fix it, yeah, you need another guitar. And uh, so, yeah, but I felt confident and uh, it was absolutely worth doing it. It's way easier to play the guitar now. I use the same fret wire as on my uh, self-built T-Type, which is this uh, Gildo fret wire. It's a medium jumbo. <laughs> What I also love about this guitar is that even though it's a 2015 model, the least beloved 
production year in Gibson's history. It just has a regular neck width. It's just a normal Gibson neck. Um, the uh, the neck shape at the back is nice and round, which is something I absolutely love. It's not too thin. It's not the slim taper one, but it's also not like a huge 58 neck or something. It's it's not in the way. It's just round and smooth and everything. It's um, it's a very comfy neck, and it didn't come with the brass knot, which is again a feature the 2015 models all had in common, except for this one which is so cool. It just had a normal GraphTech nut. I put in a bone knot and I filed it for some crazy gauge strings because I wanted to play open C slide on this guitar. Uh, and there goes my Joy Landreth um, influence, <laughs> by the way. Uh, so I, I was using like 15 or 16 to 74, 72, 74 gauge strings, like a crazy custom gauge. Uh, string set and uh, I had the tension relatively high as well for slides and uh, that worked out pretty well but then I needed the guitar um, back again a uh, normal like E flat standard tuning and for that I had to fill up the nut <laughs> I'm using 11 to 52 right now, which is the earnable uh, Burley Slinkies, which work perfectly for this scale length and the wraparound bridge for E flat tuning. Even if I want to drop the string, it works. Let me know in the comments if uh, I forgot to mention anything about this guitar or if you have any related questions, whatever it is, just let me know. You guys take it easy, have a nice week and uh, we'll see each other very soon. Bye bye.